VIP access. VIP access with Aniko and Africa Loud. First time we met, melodies on the dance floor. Oh, I'm sinking fast. The way you move, you know I want more. Oh, oh, love, in me, in me, I'm more. That's just the way it is. Oh, love, in me, in me, I'm more. In me, I'm more. <laughs> Welcome to VIP Access. It's the real VIP treatment I'm receiving right here thanks to this amazing, amazing vocalist, R&B and soulful musician, Meryl Page. She just gave me and gave you a little bit a of little bit. a taste <laughs> of what she's made of. Ah, you are so amazing. Oh, thank you. Meryl, Meryl, you're here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you for coming. Oh. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I have to tell everybody watching and listening that you are like family to me. Oh, yeah. Because Meryl's brother, Okinawa, mm -hmm. is like one of my bestest, best, besties, 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 yes. best friends. Yes. We've been friends since I came to Nairobi. Yes. I met Oki. Um, so I came to Nairobi after high school when I had my gap year before university. Mm -hmm. And then I studied French at the Alliance Francaise. Mm -hmm. That's where I met um, Chimano yeah. of Saudi Soul. Before Saudi Soul, that's where I met, um, who else? Bien was mm -hmm. singing at the choir. So before the formation of Saudi Soul. And somehow that's how I met Oki. So yes. you can see can how see we've been friends since I came time. to Nairobi. And that's a lot, that's a lot of years. I think that's it's about 13 years. Over. Yeah, over maybe. Yeah. So, yeah, and then he always used to tell me about his amazing sister. Oh, oh first of all, don't break, break. First of all, he's the one who's beat my face. Hey, he's saying how beat my face. Oh, he beat that face. Yeah, he's, mm. he's my makeup artist, so he's the one who beats my face when I have amazing, things like this. Amazing, yeah. amazing. You look so beautiful. Yeah. What a supportive brother and individual much. you yes, have in him. I do, I do have a very supportive brother. And, yeah, that's how you actually came, out, came to hear about me. Yeah, yeah, he's been plugging you. And I remember when you had your um, the launch of your um, album. Yes. On that very same day, yeah. we had an, an, another event. Yes. An Aniko PR event. And Oki was like, you have to come. You have to come. Yeah. And I had an I event. So I, I wasn't able to come because I was there. But then Oki was like, you will have to come. Even if it's it at the was, end. It's so I day. literally showed up and the event was over. But it was such a huge thing for you and for him. and. <sighs> Such a beautiful event that was. It was a very beautiful yeah. event. Uh, I was I was launching the um, my album Super, Super Ego, Ego, my first album. Yes, which and came out in 2020. 2020. Yes. Um, um March 7th. It was right just before, before COVID. COVID, COVID just Days before. before. <laughs> Jesus. When I outside had, was outside. I had, when outside was outside, <laughs> I was looking good. I was feeling good. I had planned so many things, gigs after my my peer journey, my media tour. So as in just after the the very good gig that mm. I happened, that, that I did a whole event, I planned it myself. Mm. It came out so amazing, mm. more than it, it was more than I had you know anticipated for, mm. because the, the the album is called Super Ego. So Super Ego is literally you know fighting. It's, it's like whatever laws that were, were input into you as a child. Mm. It's like it's like the battle between you know, those, th that self mm -hmm. and your new self. So I was, I had written songs for how long? Um, since 2013, because mm -hmm. I, I was in Saudi Academy. Yes. Yes. Did was, we actually meet while in Saudi Academy? Because I used to work there as a label manager. Yes. But for a short period, maybe two years. Do they do what? Uh, did we meet? Did, we did met you meet? at Saudi Academy. So we met there. We met uh -huh. there. We met after, like, we yeah. Met, yeah we, after I, I, was I sometimes tend to f to forget, like, who I met where. Yes. Because sometimes, you know, people in the industry and you're not sure exactly where the first encounter happened. Yeah. So we might have met there we maybe met before there. I put two and two together that you're Oki's sister. Yes. Then later on, it's like, my sister sings. Sings, yes. And then, then now. You, so it was me, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, since Saudi actually in 2013, I started singing immediately. Started doing like my 
album, like my uh, like a small event called Lovers and Friends, mm -hmm. where I put up a platform for artists. Mm -hmm. That's how I get got to know so many people, as in they've all performed on my platform, then Seoul, um, Le Band, the, they've all passed through my like that platform. So I was also giving myself psych for the music industry. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it? Oh, so in the beginning, yeah. you had this platform for other artists, but you were actually not performing there. I was. There. It was you also a platform performing. for myself. Yeah, Fantastic. Just, I, that's the only place I could get to practice and to gig because mm. I was mostly doing acoustic events. Mm. Apart from there, that, that is where I could do like my actual band and my songs. So mm. I've written songs since then. And I, w I had gone through so many things mm. and I just wanted to release this album. So you can only imagine by the times where ego was happening, which mm. is in 2020, I, it, was a, it was a great thing. Yeah. That's why I it sent was you a great tickets. moment I was in like, your career, you in your through, yeah. life, and you're happy with, you know, yourself having put that out how yes. you did. Yes. I'm mm. very, very, very happy. Because people used to ask me, like, you're a musician. I don't get your recorded work. Where is your work? Where can we find you? I don't even know where you can find me. You can only get me while I'm performing live yeah. and most people, maybe they're out of town, maybe you know, things like that, yeah. which was a worry to me now. The only thing that I actually wanted to achieve with that album mm. mainly was to just have my song available for everybody mm. and anyone who can find it. Yeah, because it's yeah. very empowering and, um, you know, a, a great feeling to be like, just go on there and search Mary Lou, find me and all my music. Yeah. It's, yes. it's so nice yes. now. You, you, you can Google my name. <laughs> And also go That's read nice. about me. Yes, go read about me. <laughs> so I want to talk about your talent, the instrument, that voice. Big it's time. so powerful. Like, and um, you're one of the few um, artists or singers who has also a powerful speaking voice. Uh -huh. Some people don't uh, sound, don't speak how they sound when they sing. Mm -hmm. But like, you got the nice deep voice, and then when you sing, I'm like, yes. <laughs> like you have this timbre guys. and this um, <laughs> vibration. And Damn, tell me about that instrument. Um, I don't know what to tell you about it, but um, I think I started singing like at two years old, dancing to like even Chaka Chaka. Wow, and two people, years. Yeah, you were like, singing two years, at two years. I have like small videos, I think snippets and on, on DVDs. <laughs> Hopefully my mom still has them on diskettes. They're called diskettes. Yes, you know? yes, <laughs> Hopefully yes. Hopefully my yes. mom still has them. But um, I started at that, that time and the people who were singing when I was young were Brenda Farsi, Yvonne Chaka Chaka. Um, Brenda Malope, those people are big voice women. And it's so interesting because our parents, I say our parents, like Lua parents, mm -hmm. were so much into those sounds. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my Like goodness. Franco. Yes. Lia Bell. Yeah. As in, so, as in my... Papa Wemba. And, and at that time, when again... When Coffee Lomi Day was not mainstream. Very, very much. Yeah. And at the same time, um, Mariah mm. was on it. Like, that's my time, my 90s. Of I'm course. Like, Yes, I'm 30. Let me, people don't mention their names, but I'm 30 years old now. So you can only tell the time. Yeah. Around the time I was growing up, the people who were big were Celine Dion, yes, Mariah. Yes. So the songs I was singing were those songs. Mm. And I, I guess my lungs got to practice mm. how to belt and sing high notes. I was very, very, very nervous. Uh, but I did music in high school. Mm. I was a solo. I went to my girls in Nairobi. Mm. So I was a solo, um, a solo, soloist. Yes. Drama soloist, music soloist. And, you know, that kind of built my action all the way to Saudi Academy mm. where now I got that stepping stone. Yes. And so the possibility of actually being an, a, a musician as a woman in Africa, in Nairobi, you know, I didn't, I wasn't seeing any, you know, when you were growing up, I, I wasn't like, I want to be a musician when I grew up. I was like, I want to be a doctor or a bird or something like that. It wasn't a possibility for me. It wasn't even in my mind, to Why? be honest. I just wanted to sing in the choir, but I just have a passion mm. for singing. I, I, like yeah. in class seven is when I was told, but you know, you can really sing. And I mm. actually realized that it's a bit more special than, than most because mm. I'd sing in church. They'd make me sing in church all the time at boarding school. Make me sing in church all the time. So... Um, I grew into singing um, R and B, singing Asha, um, and and you know, as in I, I, was, I found out that by the way, I can sing like a jukebox. Actually, in uni, they, in high school, they were calling me a jukebox. <laughs> they pay me in smokies. <laughs> they pay me in smokies and, and ask you to sing whatever. Yeah, and and, and fudge. I'd find fudge in my, in my in my desk. I'd know ah, it's whack. I have to go sing some song, and they'd write for me the song on the fudge. So I go learn oh the song. I meet them like a, like a friend, a friend. <laughs> this is in high school. Hustler. I oh sing my for goodness. them. But I, I didn't even want to hustle, but I think I started making money in high school. <laughs> 
20 you are the bobs. second artist I've spoken to because uh, I also spoke to Costa Ojuang oh, yeah? on the second um, uh, episode of this podcast. Mm-hmm. And he also started making money in high school. Yeah. Um, and, and for him, was as an artist, like people would bring him cards. He would write like beautiful messages and yes. drawings and they would send to their girlfriends and they would pay him. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, I started like as se- sending, this girl, this, the girls were sending to their we had best friends, um, like uh, what dedications I'd be sent from like a, from one class all the way to from four class. Mm. Go, 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 sing for her, sing for her. Then I'd be like, um, what do I sing? And tell me, like, sing like a telling like a, a Mariah Carey song. I'm like, and I <laughs> will always love you. And no, they give me up my 20 bob and my fudge, and I go to nice. class, yeah. Nice, nice. That's that was, wonderful. Yeah, they, by then, we girls, people can tell you they used me badly. <laughs> <laughs> you got fudges. Uh, no, I, I think it's still <laughs> underpaid. It's still like minimum. Pay. You expected more. But the work I was doing, I was singing full songs. <laughs> like, you met, they word. made you sing full songs yeah, for fudges. Full, full songs. Or what, Damn, what else, that's sorry. a that's a real hustle. Uh, like now, if you think about it, you're not even hustling like you used to hustle. Yeah, then. like I could do half a song and then just harm the rest. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I, I want to talk about a very important project that dropped in 2019, um, Odds to Queens. Odds by Queens. Odds by Queens. Yes, and yes. this is an, an album, a Kenyan album, uh, by the music producer, Waitaka and songwriter. Keyword is a Kenyan all-female yeah, album. Yeah, Kenyan all-female album. Yes. That's the key, key, key word, key guys. Word, yes. Um, and it's such an amazing project. And it was such a beautiful thing to listen to. And I remember... I don't know. It took me through COVID. It's just it like did. when COVID happened, you had to find things to do, yes. more music to listen to. Yeah. That's when I actually started my uh, professional work as a music curator. Because oh. then I started creating playlists because yes. I was out of town mm-hmm. and I didn't have anything to do. And sometimes because I was in the Bundus, mm-hmm. I was in Masai Mara the entire time. Sometimes there was no electricity. Oh, yeah. And so I was, it was killing me. Like the silence sometimes <laughs> was starting to eat my head. And yes. it's like sometimes... You need the silence to think. But I was like, no, I want to listen to music. music. So that's when I started curating music. And I remember out of all the music that I was curating and listening to, that's the one album that took me through the entire period. Yeah, like it was, was a very important a project to me. Idea. And for some reason, your song, Jahera, Hera, yeah. was like my best. Yes. Because I also had you sing in Lua and I was like, oh my God. Yeah. It's like our the, our language is so beautiful. Yes, yes. And um, it is very beautiful. It's so beautiful. And when so, you sing in it, it just was really beautiful. Tell me about being part of that project, you know, uh, what it meant to you. Who are the all, other females who are part of this uh, Odds to Queens? Odds by Queens, yeah. Odds, odds by and Queens. Odds and means like, you know, you're paying. Yes, you know tribute. Is, tribute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Queens. So, um, so Odds by Queens, uh, mm. we are the Kenyan queens who mm. are like doing those songs. We we came together. Let's just say there's a friend of mine. And it's and interesting. It could also be Odds to, to queens. queens. Yes, it could. It so could be. Waidaka. Yeah. Waidaka Entertainment. He's a Kenyan producer mm. who lives in the States. Yes. He's male, but he came up with this idea. He was like, uh, do you know there's no Kenyan uh, album that's just full of women working together? And the funniest thing and the best thing about this album is mm-hmm. how it came together. Mm-hmm. It was so easy. Because first of all, most of us or all of us were friends with this one person called Waidera. <laughs> she came up, like she came, she called me, she called a few people. Because I called like Tuni One Boy. There's Chep, who's also part of Wanavu Kali. Mm. Also uh, Lena, who's one of Ukali, part of Wanavu Kali. Um, there's a couple of people, Sarah. Mm. Uh, Oh, we all came together. We actually had like a meeting at, at Java. Oh my God, that's wonderful. I didn't yeah. even know that you all actually came together came and sat together. down we together. sat down together. And Waidaka said, hey, I have this idea and this is how we're going to do the splits. It was the easiest thing to do because all the time we were filling our minds up with how we're going to pay money to get into mm-hmm. studio. We're just thinking of getting into studio monetary wise, like you have to pay your way in and then mm-hmm. you do your recording. Then you have to think about the marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, let me, I'll give you a deal. I'll give you a song, you give me a song. Mm. Just like that. We were like, it's as easy as writing. Yeah. And as easy as you paying for the studio. He was like, I'll do that. And we were in, in two weeks, we had all recorded our songs. Like wow. in two weeks. He was here for a month, uh, around two months. Mm. But one month now was for work. Mm. And in two weeks, we had all recorded our songs. 
like so that was uh, easy but he showed me how easy music can be mm. it doesn't necessarily have to be or when you have money or when you're bowling or when you're it doesn't have to be so tough of mm. which my experience in music has been very tough from when i started to 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 to, to even at south academy it was pretty mm. tough for me uh, i was wondering uh, all this money where do you get it to invest before before you get like something back mm. as in where are you getting this money because you are you're a musician you're an artist you mm. want to express yourself and there's nobody necessarily who's handing you these things mm. and for him i felt like it was like a whole handout like that album for me was one of my favorite albums mm. song to song from mary olive to sero to me i'm like on number yeah. three or something like that um to chef or who else is wabi sherry mm. which i'll tell you about wabi sherry like soon um it's a beautiful project it's very beautiful the songs are nice and to hear women after women after women singing and during covid i was playing it in my household trust me every time the males actually were coming out telling me play that album <laughs> play that album yeah and it's them who are telling me so it wasn't even a, it wasn't even about us mm. only it was for it was a beautiful project for everybody. Fantastic. Yes. You sound very passionate about this album, about the fact that Kenyan women came together and you sound very proud that you worked with this, you know, Kenyan very, women and very, that this male gave the opportunity to yes, for the yes. females to do their thing like this. So, tell me more about your passion, you know, for women and especially for women to collaborate and do stuff together in the industry because it's not easy being out here in an industry which is so male saturated. Yes. Well, uh, first of all, I feel like number one is I feel usually in my womanhood, I usually feel very powerful. Hey. Like number two, if you put two of us together somewhere working on something, it's definitely going to work. People are always saying that, oh, women are so hard to work with. Women, my team has always had women. Mm. As in working, that has always been about women, mm. has always had women. My mother has been my full on support. Mm. My sister is a strong. She works out if you go on my Instagram feed be a doula like the people I see around me are very strong women who are passionate, who pursue the things they want and they get them. Uh my best friend is always getting what she wants, you're getting. Mm. So, I'm so passionate. I say where two or three women or four women are gathered, it's about to be a whole storm. <laughs> for real. It's I about to it. be a storm. That's what I usually say. I love so it. Can you imagine? We came together for this um, Oats by Queens. Mm -hmm. And do you know, there was no drama. So I was, I was wondering, uh, why do people always talk about women having a tussle every time what women can't work together? I don't understand those mm -hmm. women because uh, when I think as we are very... Um, we, we are methodical. Like mm -hmm. when it comes to something that we want, we know how to a panga. Mm -hmm. We know how to arrange and organize very well. So it was organized, and we came up like all of us did the 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 thing, and we we, we did it right. Mm -hmm. So after this, me and White there have been having these exchanges of she sends me gigs, I send her oh, projects, wonderful. yeah, things like that. Same as, uh, um, what's her name? Wabi Sherry. Mm. Wabi Sherry is a CEO of a Siri, Siri yeah, Music, mm -hmm. Siri Academy and Siri, um, it's like Siri Music, yeah? Yes. Which is like a fraternity for music yeah. and, and learning French and, and learning, uh, learning music yes. and um, language. So we all usually come together and help with each other's projects mm. when time comes. That's you get amazing. It. So for me, I feel like it's easy when I'm working with women. And number two, it's because we have a plight. Like women have a plight. We do. We do. We, we, we have a, one of many yeah. plights. <laughs> many plights. But we do in the music industry. We do. Whereby we don't have this, I call it the Goteana community. Mm. Men can come and decide. They don't even decide their money. They just say, I want you to do a project with me. They go to Anna like this and they say, we'll sort it in Bele to yeah, sort in Bele. Yeah. Are you getting? They don't talk about everything right now and say, by the way, Nico, because I'm coming for your show, you'll give me 50,000. Mm. If you don't have it, then I won't appear. No. They say, we'll, we'll fix it in mm. the, at the front. We don't have that. And we always have such a diff such difficulty working with them considering mm. that they are the they're still the owners of this industry mm. or that the heads or the ones who own a lot yes, of the, yes. a lot of the monetary and there are a lot of them are sitting on the the decision making tables yes they're the ones sitting on the decision making mm -hmm. tables so when you talk to them they look at you 
number one, you know, they look at you some way. Yeah. Some of them are not saying everyone. Some of them will look at you some type of way, want your number and want to use it in a different mm. way. And if you refuse, well, you know, your dreams are, they vanish. Number two, um, some some guys just don't have that. They can't deal with you money-wise mm. as a woman. Can you imagine? I've been told, like, if you want me to pay, as in, as in, why do you want me? Like, if I want me to pay you, then we have to deal in another way. Are you getting? But what way? In, in, like I've been told enough things in this mm. industry. Let me just begin. Some with, people told you that. Yes, some people told me like, as in, I can't work with women. I don't work with women. At why women have so many, so much drama. And if you want me to pay you for this so gig annoying. or whatever it is, as in, then we have to work a different way. Now we have to be. We can't be friends. If you get, you get what I mean, okay, we can't be friends. Okay. Okay. Yes. So I was like, okay. No. No as, thanks. Yes, I was like, no, thank you. Because I have fought my way, just blood by blood by blood by sweat, from when I started this idea by myself. Mm. And I'm regret where I'm going slowly. Because mm. people give you all sorts of promises. Oh, if you come, I will, I will, I'm going to manage you. I'll give you all the money I'm going to give you. And then for what? So you can give me a baby and then I'm not recording anymore. <laughs> Very. I swear, like, <laughs> then I'm not recording anymore. To be honest, that's how that's the plight. Like we're facing so much mm. of that, and I have friends who have quit music a lot because also number two, number three, they they get children and they stop because music mm. doesn't necessarily pay you. Yeah, doesn't it's a business. You have to invest and invest mm. for it to have returns. Yes, yes. So when you're having a child, you have to start concentrating on that child and considering the amount of uh, males that don't care about their offsprings women are so many they're doing this single-handedly so mm -hmm. many of them feeding their children that they would rather quit their dream get their song buds they sing mm -hmm. like heaven they'd rather quit their dream to feed their children of and course. to move forward yeah and considering they quit very young they don't know how to come back mm -hmm. they don't know how to come back and those are the kind of mentorship mm. and mentorship programs that me and Siri and Wabi mm. Shari are trying to bring back mm -hmm. like to capture them back not to be able like to have more females in the industry mm -hmm. singing and like if you even see the 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 what are they called lineups yes. in our concerts Men, 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 one lady. Yeah, Fena. Yeah, yeah. Men, 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 Femi one. Mm. They are like that is it. And the there's so many women out here who are singers, singers. So many, even rappers. Very many, because even I had rappers. a rapper in the previous um, episodes, or rappers, because yes. I also had Wangeshi, I had Groovy Joe, mm -hmm. and they were listing so many rappers. And, yes. you know, there's always this narrative, like, hey, where are the Kenyan female singers, or where are the female rappers. Kenyan female yeah. rappers? But they don't want to give us a chance. They're there. I promise they're there. you, they don't give us a chance. If mm. they want, it has to come with a string. Or, or they say that we are lazy. I don't know. I don't understand where it comes from. Mm. But they have this thing where they'll give their friend, a man friend, a chance before they give you mm. a chance. And if you don't have management that's also male who mm. can talk to that that language or on that level, then also you you kind of mm. lose out. Are you getting? You I'm lose getting. Out. Someone like me, I've been fighting for these platforms for a very long time. Mm. I've been applying online, following the same channels. And I just get... I don't even, sometimes I don't even get like a reply. Like, who are you? Because mm. they don't want to get out of their seats, come and watch me sing, perform mm. live to be like, you know, actually this girl has something. Yeah. There's something about her. But they want to advise me and change the narrative. You know, if you sang this pop song, you you would be pop, pop right now. Mm. If you dress like this, if you lost a bit of weight, you would look mm. like Beyonce, you would pop right now. You have a great voice, but you need to do this about mm. your brand. Of which, you know, all personally, all I want to do is sing. Yeah. As in, I don't want anything more. My ambitions don't cross. Oh, I want to be the biggest. I would want love to be. Mm. But I just want to sing until the day I die. <laughs> that is my ambition. So it doesn't, those things don't bother me too much. But they bother so many other females mm. because they don't know how to cross those, those lines. Mm. But I've been here long enough. Those things don't bother me long enough. So I create mentorship, like opportunities, okay. information giving, mm. like I just give information freely, by the way, to these women so that they can be able to release their albums, mm. to get out of that funk where they're, but I'm just a mother, mm. me, I just sit at home, me, mm. I just do this. 
come out, make your money, get these gigs during the weekends, as in make 3,000, 5,000 shillings, you find yourself doing a, a, an album, mm. at least your dream is not dead. Mm. At least you're doing something. And when you're doing something, something must give. Yes, that's yeah. true. I yeah. love that. When mm. you're doing something, something must give. Yes. So so, so then what, 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 I mean, what should the women do now? Like, first of all, where, how do they access these empowerment, um, you know, programs or even just listening to you speak? I think it's it's very important that you've spoken about that very clearly here on this podcast so those who are listening can share with their friends, especially mm -hmm. females in the industry who are struggling or are not sure of where they're going because of the challenges. So how can all that information be accessible directly to you? Um, and I mean, what kind of advice would you give to the females who want to get into the industry? Because it seems like it's 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 a big, bad world out here it's it is um but you know for for your sacrifices yeah it's worth it you, like if you actually want to sacrifice for your passion it, like everything is a sacrifice business mm. is a sacrifice mm. like if you do want to you and you're strong enough mm. and you hold hands of other people yeah because me have not done it alone may mm. have as i've told you people have held my hands mm. all, all through um mostly females mm. and if you can get people who are willing like you know me and Syriam Ziki, Ziki mm. mentorship pro mm. program and even even um Victoria Gishara mm. she has this thing called speak music yes she yes. invited me severally but I was never able to make it yet yeah and, and as you're speaking I'm thinking also to to add in what I'm thinking yes. another thing is build your community mm. and make use of your network yes. because you do that yes. quite well. Oh. You're not even saying it for yourself, but you do it quite well. Like mm. you always send me and us, even yeah. the PR team, like yes. updates. I have a new song out. Yes. Um, I have a show. You send tickets. Mm -hmm. um, I love that. You know, you don't assume like, oh, they must have seen or they'll come. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you're like, I would love this people to come and they might not know. So I'm sending them tickets. That's yes, very, yes. very important. It's important. You make sure you personally in it mm. as in so as in you have to make these things happen that's mm. the truth so the best thing Victoria Kishore and I did a, a speak music a partnership mm. last the whole of last year nice to do a, a small tiny gig and we had almost 38 people new artists as in new new, new artists new. new very gifted new artists and women were there also so many upcoming females are you getting? So mm. it was so empowering. And it was so, you get new ideas from these people. And now you wonder where are these people going to get a platform mm. because everybody's just thinking about the big stars right now. Yes. Um, to give them or any man of corporate just thinks yeah. about the numbers. Mm. So where are An where interesting the thing about people? our industry in Kenya, I haven't seen, one thing I haven't seen brands do, they're very quick to pick like the top, personality, yes. the top artist mm. for festivals to do like some influence, yes. some influencing work, um, sometimes billboards, yes. but very few are coming up with initiatives that are like um, spotlighting like the up and coming artists. You know, it's like the, the Blaze tried to do Chaska something tried, last year. And also the Blaze platform by Safaricom yes. did that when it lasted. Yes. And I think, I'm not sure if it's back on now or what's happening. I hope it comes back. Mm. The Syria Miziki. You can contact them. Fantastic. Yeah, you can contact Victoria Gishora. I'm so mm. sure even me. Contact me. I'll give you the... Just DM me. I'm going to give you the 411 on your DM for you to you start if you're actually serious because there's also very unserious human beings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the also, serious ones only. Yeah, only those only can DM. Only serious ones because there's very unserious human beings. Mm. They just DM you and mm. say whatever you want to say and... And I will give you a few, no more well, my time. Mm. If it could help, I'm glad to. Hey, yeah. Mary, you're such a force. Ah. You know, sitting <laughs> here with you, I just feel the energy. I feel the passion. I I see the fire burning inside your belly. Yes. <laughs> Big fire. I'm very passionate. I love it. I have like I have I'm passionate about this mentorship thing, about women mm. and women working together and more women being in the industry. And working together. Like that thing. Mm. I have a song. You said with a rapper. I have two songs with two rappers. I have like I work with women so many, so much. Mm. The issue is now when we release the songs, it's like apparently men don't listen to women's music unless it's about love, dancing weirdly, and as in if you get what I mean. Mm. So as in the songs that we are doing are very enlightening and uplifting mm. um, and encouraging. 
So that's very also that's important for our society for girls who are growing. Mm. Yeah. So that's a very very big passion for me. Hey, <laughs> I've enjoyed this conversation. I have. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much, Meryl Page. Thank and that's, you. that's why I'm, I'm doing this podcast because you see Meryl, you listen to her album and you think that's that, but that's not that. Like behind the person, the music is so much passion <laughs> and um, drive, you know, to uplift other women in the industry and to collaborate and do bigger projects. And whoa, it's been just mind blowing to it listen is. to you. I'm actually so inspired. And I hope thank so many you. women who are listening are also inspired to do stuff together. Um, to discover more female projects. Some maybe might not have had that yes. dope album from 2019. Odds Go stream the music. Or Odd to Queens and by Queens. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Yes, Shout yes. out to Idaka. He's to a really Idaka. dope guy. I've never met him in person, but He's we amazing. are friends on WhatsApp and on, on, on the social. He has a lot of music yeah. All, uh, yeah. online and they're beautifully done yeah. by Africa, by Kenya. Yes. You know, people say there's no Kenya music. Oh, like, Kenya. What are you guys talking about? Please <laughs> just go and go to his catalog yes. and see all the yeah. things he's done. It's amazing. Amazing. Oh, oh mine too. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so before we leave, I just want to ask you to give five tips um, mm. to women specifically who want to get into the industry. What are the five tips that they should look out for? Okay. Um, first of all, they should be very resilient. Mm. Resilient and they should be passionate. Mm. So that's one. Passionate okay. and resilient. Before they start this thing. Yeah. <laughs> They should know that you have to put in the work and you have to invest in your art. Okay. You have to invest in your art, whether you like it or not. It's your business. You also have to invest in your brand. Mm. That's number three. Invest in your brand. Invest in, find out what you're about. Look for, look for something that's niche about you and push that until the end. Push the narrative until mm. the end. Um, number four, well, this is tips, Yeah. As in, be strong about what you are. Be strong-headed. Be just, what do you call it? Kichwangumu. Kichwangumu. Yeah, it's about like, it. if you decide you want to do it, do it. Yes. And don't let somebody change Te your mind yes, for nothing. Yes, and tell you that it's the wrong thing. And tell you, oh, you should be like this, but do this. If you, that's what you believe in, be Kichwangumu about it. Mm. Like, everybody will tell you, you know, everyone will tell you it's not the right way. Go be mm. a doctor, a nurse, or, you know, something like that. Someone's PA somewhere hmm. but you you know if you're meant for the stars you are and number four you are enough the way you are that is exactly how you're supposed to be as in that's where you're supposed to be also you're enough hmm. yeah those are wow. five wow yeah that's yes, five yes. you said four but that was five the same yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, it's been so amazing to have you. Thank you. Uh, before we wrap up, is there any message you want to give to uh, Mariel Page's fans, you know, who've been supporting mm. from day one, from the time you had your very first event, and now they're listening and they're like, wow, so proud to see the journey you've taken. Yeah. What do you want to tell your day ones? My day ones. Uh, my first event that I had after South Academy, like, I, which was about, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it was for... Uh, cancer awareness mm -hmm. it was called soul tactics i had a hundred guests Whoa. come through those are my dear ones they still come for my show <laughs> up to today Fantastic. they have never changed and and i'm always thankful and grateful and i wish you all to tell others so that we can all grow as a family and all as a unit obviously i have more songs coming more songs on youtube more songs on on spotify online everywhere you you know, everywhere yeah. that you would want to have music. I, I have it there. Yeah. Thank you so much, Finally. Mariel. <laughs> it's been so great to have you. Um, I celebrate you. Thank you very much. I love you so much. Thank you. I love you too. I love your brother too. <laughs> your family is my Thanks. family. <laughs> uh, Nico, you know. Yeah. You're always welcome. Yeah. Asante. So that's why we're wrapping up VIP Access this week with the amazing Meryl Page. Please listen to her music across all digital platforms. Follow her on social media. Um, she has amazing music. She's passionate about empowering the industry. Um, and you will learn a lot if you follow her closely. <laughs> I always promise you amazing guests. So come back next week and we'll be sitting down with yet another amazing artist or creative. Thank you. VIP Access, VIP Access. with Aniko on Africa Loud.